Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always say, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. And today's video is going to be all about canning and how to do it. If you've never canned before and you're interested in the process and how to do it, then this video is for you. Now, traditionally, canning is done through glass jars, and there's two different methods that you can do that. There is the ball method and the WEC jar method. Today we are gonna be going over the ball method and how to safely do it. Now there's many different types of foods that you can can, and for each type of food, there is a way to process it, whether that would be in a water bath canner or it would be in a pressure canner. And that all depends on whether or not the food is a low acid food or a high acid food. Now, don't worry, there are many ways to figure out whether your food is low acid or high acid and how to process it. And the best way to find out is through the recipe. And if you have any questions, here are some resources that you can use in order to find out. The National Center for Home Food Preservation is an excellent resource, especially if you have any doubts or questions on how to properly preserve your food safely. Also, the website's pretty cut and dry and easy to navigate. On the home page, you are going to see a column that says, how do I do it with a variety of ways on how to preserve food. You're going to want to select can, which brings you to the next page. How do I can and canning? There's a selection here on different fruits and vegetables to can. I'm going to be canning fruit. So I will be selecting canning fruits and fruit products. As you can see on the next page, there is a large variety on different fruits that you can can. Um, and they will actually give you the recipes. So let's say you wanna can apple butter. Select apple butter and the recipe comes up, how much it yields, about eight to nine pints, the procedure on how to can the apple butter, and a table that recommends how to can it and what your altitude should be. If you don't know your altitude, no problem. Just go back to your home page under where it says, how do I do it? Select can. And then on the next page, you just scroll down where it says, find your altitude and select that. And it will take you to the next page for general canning information to finding your altitude and how to do that for your area. Some other resources you can refer to is the Complete Guide to Home Canning by the USDA, and that's filled with just so much information on how to start canning and how to do it safely. The other book is the Complete Book for Home Preservation with The Ball Company, and they have just wonderful, colorful pages and recipes, how to properly do it, and I highly recommend this book as a resource as well. Also, there are certain foods you cannot preserve through canning, such as eggs and dairy products, along with cornstarch, flour, or any type of thickeners. No grains such as rice, pasta, oats, or anything like that. Okay, I know that seems like a lot of information, but trust me when I tell you, it does get easier. As you do a recipe here and there, you start to learn the process a lot more, and you'll navigate these systems like the books and the websites, and you'll just keep learning and learning. Now that we have that all down pat, let's start canning, but here are some tools that we need first before we begin. Some of these tools are optional. Here is a debubbler. If you don't have one, that's fine. You could always use a butter knife. A magnetic wand for your lids. Some canning lids just in case. A jar lifter. And a funnel to fill your jars. The next thing you want to do is take your jars and clean them in nice hot soapy water. This is a really good time to actually do an inspection of your jars to check to see if there's any cracks or crevices or anything that's chipped there that may not be good for the canning process. If you desire your jars to be completely sterile, then submerge them in hot water for 10 minutes and that'll sterilize them. Next thing you want to do is start filling your jar and making sure you have the correct headspace by using your debubbler and measurer. Honestly guys, at this point I've been canning so long that I eyeball it, but for this instructional video, 
I needed to show you the debubbler and how to use it. Next, take a clean washcloth with either vinegar or hot water, cleaning off the rim, making sure it is clear of any residue or food that might interfere with the seal. Now take your lid out of the hot water with your wand and place it on top of your jar. Add the ring, place it on top, and secure it until it is fingertip tight. You do not want to crank down the seal. Fingertip tight is quite enough. Cranking it down will cause buckling and troubles to your seal. Now it's time to place your jars in the canner. This recipe called for a water bath at 10 minutes processing time. And by the way, anything that is processed for 10 minutes and more will sterilize the jar and the lids, also the rings. When the jars are done processing, take them out of the canner and place them in a cool area where they can stay and sit for 12 to 24 hours until completely sealed. After that time is up, take all the rings off for storage. And now is a good time to check for a really good seal. To check for a good seal, you want to press the top of the lid to make sure that the button doesn't bounce back on you. If it doesn't bounce back and it's nice and flat, then that is a sign of a really good seal. Now it's time to store your jars, whether it be in a pantry or a cellar or a nice cool place. Either way, you'll be able to pop these jars out and enjoy the benefits of your hard work and fresh preserved food. Okay, well that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have learned a lot and I encourage you to continue on your journey. And uh, believe me, there are so many benefits to canning. And if you want to see the video on that, I will put the link in the description below. Other than that, have a great day. And like I always say, if you can't get it to make, then make it make.